And welcome to Community Viewpoint. I'm John Pollock, your host for this evening's show. Tonight, hopefully, is Monday, December 13th. Uh, we're getting close to the Christmas time, so it's one of those shows with the fire department that's here. Um, fire and rescue uh, person, uh, paramedic, is Greg uh, Donat. Uh, he's from, uh, you do live in Prompton, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, we're going to be talking about fire safety and looking behind us. It's a uh, I don't want that for my house. I'm just too busy. There's too much that can go wrong. And we're going to talk about uh, what can go wrong. Um, I don't know. You know what? Let's get the video out of the way first. I downloaded the, the uh, Christmas tree burning uh, video. We've done that in the past. Uh, Jeff, are you ready to, to roll with that? To show you some of the, the how quickly a Christmas tree can burn? And then we'll get back to your part and you, you, you go full bore on uh, the do's and don'ts for Christmas. So let's do the Christmas tree and see what you shouldn't see in your house. So you too can uh, uh, download that and uh, uh, have that as a warning for yourself. That's, all, that's off of YouTube, and that's where I got this one uh, for today. Um, so we're going to be talking about uh, how not to do things like that with, uh, with Greg here. So um, tell us some of the fire safety for the trees, and then go on to lights and other things around the house, if you will, please. Okay, well, there's lots of things you should remember about trees. Trees uh, living uh, should be fairly fresh uh, needles should be um, intact not falling off the tree when you pull on it they should be kind of tough to to get off the tree and not breaking off in your hand right. you also got to remember um, trees have also dead needles in them so mm -hmm. to make sure to clean the trees thoroughly before you place them in your house make sure there's nothing dead in the inside of it so your lights can't be resting against any dead needles also, your trees should be watered on a regular basis. People always forget to water their trees. Keep them as water as much water in there as you can. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we, we do water them, and then we do have dogs and stuff yeah. that drink out of there. So Cats. you know, keep looking at it to make sure the water is still yeah. there. Uh, make sure that, that your tree is not near any fireplaces or any uh, source of ignition, heaters, um, space heaters, anything in your house oh that you God, use yeah. to... You know, portable heaters, things like that, can can seriously uh, dry out a tree mm -hmm. and even cause it to light on fire. Being a close distance away from it, so you got you got to make sure. Um, now, with some of the um, trees that are the fake trees, um, things you want to look for with those are to make sure that the tree is rated for fire safety. They have fire retardant. Uh, Christmas trees out there that you can get for the inside of your house that 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 they can still catch on fire but it takes a lot no. longer um, to to do that they uh, they tend not to to combust in the way yes, a dry quickly. tree would yeah because if they go up quickly if you especially if you're in a mobile home because I was in one uh, there was a fire in there and everything started melting really quickly so mm -hmm. uh, if the next ignition comes quickly then your mobile home yeah. will go up the, all the quicker. And as you saw in the video, 30 seconds is pretty much all it takes to yeah. to ruin Christmas. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you go into your lights. Uh, your lights are, are all rated, UL rated. Um, you can only plug in so many strands into one outlet. I think they suggest like three for a uh, power uh, strip. Exactly. And uh, Home Depot, uh, 100 
bulb string was a, a buck ninety eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're 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 relatively cheap nowadays. If you have if you're trying to get that la that string to last another seven or eight or nine years, uh, and you're not sure about it, throw it away because it's only a couple exactly. bucks. Yeah, exactly. You want to inspect your lights. You want to look for bare wires, yeah. new or old. You know, they come out of the box. Sometimes some of the lights get hung up when you're taking them apart. They're wrapped so right. tight. Um, you want to look for broken light bulbs, things like that, that could cause uh, an electrical short in a tree. I think about that one scene from Christmas Vacation with the cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, watch your animals that they're not gnawing on the... Uh, or on, in your trees. Yeah. Pull, yes. Pulling on the wires. Yes. Um, those are uh, types of different things. And then when w with your... Uh, synthetic or your fake Christmas trees, you got to remember that those branches are made of metal. So any wires oh. that cross those that could potentially cause a short, that tree can also become electric, electrified and you could get and shocked from it. And electrocute yeah, exactly. yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you got to watch out for that stuff. So you got to really be careful about what you run and how you run your wires through your trees. Mm -hmm. um, and to to be cautious and be aware of how many strands you're putting in your tree. Yeah. Um, those are, are some of the types of things you got to look for for your trees. Right, because you know behind us is it's a little overkill. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on there. There's yeah. stuff around the fireplace, things that you hang around your fireplaces that aren't necessarily Christmas trees, but just for decoration, wreaths, things like that <clears throat> around the fireplace mm -hmm. can be extremely dangerous as well. And wrapping paper around the fireplace, no. You know, that's because that's very combustible. Yeah, wrapping paper is very thin. It, it lights very easily. Yeah, so, so don't be throwing, wadding, wadding it up and throwing it in a fireplace. Abundance can, in a fireplace, yes. yeah, can, can spell for disaster, especially yeah. when you go to light that. Yeah, And make sure your uh, smoke and fire detectors are working at this time of the year. All of them. And any sign of any problem, don't hesitate to, to dial 911. Get the response going if something were to happen. Mm -hmm. Any delay could, could mean... A life, you know. Yeah, it's, if you're uh, unsure, don't be starting to fight exactly. the fire with a hose or uh, or other uh, uh, things to uh, put out the fire. If you're unsure, mm -hmm. things call, can be call, replaced. Yeah, but not your life. Not your life. No. Um, so you want you want to speed up that that process. So if something were to happen, have an evacuation plan. Have that's another thing. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah. Um, things that that could go wrong. Um, everybody has cell phones, your neighbor has phones, mm -hmm. you know, try to get as fast as you can not to delay the response. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you guys respond real, really quick and uh, uh, I can attest to that uh, uh, in the past. I've, I've seen uh, the response time, it's, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, also, don't, don't keep the trees after the lifespan, uh, uh, after Christmas. What after New Year's Eve, uh, then start thinking very seriously about getting rid of rid of the trees. And uh, we had a fax here from the uh, UNR Cooperative Extension over on Calvada and Dandelion from uh, Debbie Woodland is the the master gardeners are recycling you know, their Chris, your Christmas trees again uh, over at the south end of their parking lot at Dandelion in uh, Calvada. Uh, make sure you remove all ornaments, lights, stands, and tinsel and other extras. Uh, they want no artificial trees, flock trees or materials uh, like that uh, can be accepted. Uh, so uh, don't keep it around the house. That's just a temptation for that tree to go up in flames for whatever reason. Uh, when the season's over, get rid of it. And don't keep it next to the house either because outside it, it, it's dried out and outside also. And uh, let's see, we talked about the don't overload the electrical outlets. Make sure you get a a power strip and do not put a power strip in another power strip. That's that's a no-no also. Um, let's see. Not necessarily inside the house. There's stuff outside the house. All the lights on the outsides of people's houses. Those, yeah, you should have uh, ground fault interrupters yeah. out there too. And uh, Turning them off when you leave, making sure that, you know, if you're going to go to bed, shut them off. Make sure you don't leave them on. Um, mm -hmm. People like to use the big old bulb oh, lights. Yeah. I draw a lot of electricity and plug tons of strands in, into those yeah. from that you got handed down from your grandpa, you know, things like that, that 
there's there's newer stuff out to, to replace those and and to make sure that everything's off when you leave that's right. the biggest thing because you're not there okay. to, to watch it right I still I'm old enough to remember those tall the the bubble lights mm -hmm. those were really hot now they have the LED lights uh, they're coming out now so those are extremely cool like use almost no electricity so uh, those prices will be coming down in the near future so mm -hmm. these are some great tips that we've uh, we've gone through this evening and uh, oh another thing that uh, if you're looking for the tree, uh, there's another weekend or two before Christmas. Is it one weekend or two? I don't know. But anyway, uh, Star Nursery is open up on Sundays uh, from 10 to 5. So that's another place to go in town to uh, go feel the trees, see if it's the needles are, the, are, are good or not. But uh, they're open from 10 to 5, and they're one of our sponsors also. Um, any final words? No, just... Do we cover just, it all? Just watch everything. Oh, yeah. Make sure, make sure everything's off. Make sure, you know... No candles Every, either. Yeah. yeah, candles. People like to sometimes place candles around the house, so you want to make sure those are out before you leave as well. Yeah, you come back. We'll do another uh, program on uh, things like that too. So you're more than welcome to come back at any Thank time. You, sir. Uh, this went uh, real well, and I hope you uh, uh, got some good tips out of it uh, for the, the Christmas season. So uh, let the season be merry for all of us, and uh, we'll see you again uh, next time. The second half of the show will be coming up very shortly. And uh, thank you, and thank you for watching. Good night. Welcome back to Community Viewpoint. Once again, I'm John Pollock, your host. And we have with us uh, the honor of having uh, Linda Crosley uh, with us. And you may remember her from the Linda and You show uh, from a couple years back. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm back. <laughs> and, uh, she's she's going to pay tribute to uh, an artist. And I'm going to let her talk all about that because we only have the 15 minutes, and yeah. she's got a lot of material over here. So... Do you think you can talk on TV? Oh, yeah, I okay. think I can. Over 300 shows. Yeah. Hi, folks. Uh, there's a lot of people that ask where the infamous Uncle Milo Reckow has been. Well, he had an event, like, shall I call it, around two years ago, which put him in a facility, and it was, yes, a stroke. And he is now residing in Salem, Oregon. And uh, we're really honored that we're going to be able to have at the library over here, starting the 17th, we're going to have a reception okay. between 1.30 and 3, I believe. Also, okay. a book signing that's going to be happening over over there but um, we've already hung a lot of his uh, number two pencil drawings as well as a little bit of seasonings of his different media that he has done throughout the years um, Uncle Milo has uh, been a very very dear friend of mine and I'm doing this to honor him and uh, hopefully I can go ahead and get a copy to show him he went to the LA Art Institute and I'm just going to go ahead and show you this this is what you would call an anatomy we would take we would do 101 you know the the anatomy of the human being and Milo was very well known for his um, his well the the face the fingers you know the the and this is really old this is 1946 so what I'm just trying to get at for you is that he went to the LA Institute uh, Art Institute with Charles Schultz and we all remember peanuts remember him well the comic and so one of the things that he has really been noted for, and I, this is one of my favorites, and he used to laugh at me. It's a very, it was just a model. A lady came in and probably got maybe a five bucks for modeling way back then in Hollywood. And he learned how to draw a face. And um, if you ask anyone that can draw, they will always say the face is one of the hardest things to go ahead and draw. And was that with pencil too? or uh, Charcoal. Charcoal? Charcoal, yes. Oh. Now I'm going to go ahead and without trying to get any glare on it with my experience, I think I'll be okay. This one happens to be his wife, actually. She used to be a model. And he used to do a lot of advertising uh, over there uh, for... I can't slipping my mind back over there, RKO and everything else over there in Hollywood, California. And also for designers, we have another one. Isn't that interesting? So there's a lot more to Milo's history. And I, like I say, I do want to honor him. Now, this is a really big one. And this is his, I know there's similarity. You'll see it looks an awful lot like me. No, it is not like me. This is his wife, God rest her soul in peace. This is Mary. And this, I think, is a combination of charcoal. And do you want to know something, John? This is the first time I've seen it. 
That's it, beautiful. I, I went through um, I went through a lot of his archives, and I was taking a look at uh, the items that he had done, and I guess I missed a couple of them, and that's really hard for me to believe. Now, this is one that was done also in 1946. Once again, you're going to see quite a similarity between myself and her, which is really odd. He became the infamous Uncle Milo um, to my family and my twins, and this was done in 1946, and it was, you can't really get the effect of it, but if you can see this. He tried different things. He was always trying different things to, to go ahead and do something different, you know? And this was just uh, another head face. Isn't that cute? Wow, the, the detail is fantastic. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And this was uh, done probably in <clears throat> the 60s. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go, I think, right real quick. Um, let's go right here, shall we, folks? Um, we have this one. Now this, fill this canvas for a second. Fill it. Ooh, Is yeah. It different? Yes. Now if you can see this, I better hold it for y'all. Now you see this? These are just a couple gals that were over there in Las Vegas. And they, this is on a canvas and this is oil. Okay? So I'm going to nicely drop these. Now, for the oldie but goodies, I'm going to take this one from you, John. Okay. This is Ava Gardner. Once again, Milo's roots were from Hollywood, California. And Ava Gardner um, was one of his, uh, his models. And um, Milo knew of uh, Howard Hughes and uh, worked for, um, like I say, RKO. And uh, then he came here to, to Las Vegas and he worked at the EG&G &G Department of Energy. Ah, okay. And he was a graphic artist. This one? And, uh, yeah, I'm okay. going to skip here a little bit. He fell in love with horses, and he also fell in love with La, uh, Pahrump. Now, this is the Christmas tree one. This is a copy. I couldn't bring the uh, original because I have it in my living room right now. <laughs> but anyway, one of the things that I wanted to share with everyone out there is Uncle Milo really loved, honestly loved, PAC. Okay. Pahrump Arts Council. He also, and I know that's the hair, so I apologize, and he also wanted to tell each and every one of you in Perup who does remember him, he sends his love and uh, his gratitude for calling him friend. He's battling right now, okay, so uh, I, it's perfect timing, to say the least. To honor him, yes. Yes, and also this is, remember for the oldies but goodies, would you like to hold that one over there? That one is, uh, can you get that one over there? That one, it happens to be, remember Pillow Talk? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Rock yeah. Hudson and all that good stuff. So that's a little bit of, of that, which is with the telephone and all that. But once again, do you see the beauty of the faces? Oh my God, and so bright yes, and, and cheerful. And all, yes, and see how this one is when you go ahead and these were on billboards in, in Los Angeles area. That's right, he had it for me for, to do that. I was going to try to share. But this one was on billboards and everything over there in Hollywood. Can you imagine? Go figure. So here's this man that goes ahead and then he has what you call, I saw that, and then he goes ahead and they were called wolf ladies. Yes, he did use my face an awful lot. Primarily because I had one. Of, I am an entertainer still, and uh, he didn't have to pay me. That was a standing <laughs> joke, and so he could use my face and do anything he wanted with it because I, he had permission. So those were uh, done in charcoal, just so you know. Okay, over there. Now, keeping in mind, we were talking about strokes. Okay, do you ever think you're gonna? Could you imagine you you wake up and you go, okay, now what do I do? And every day is a blessing for, if you talk to any artist, and surely you have in your position at the mm -hmm. library, well, you, you call it a passion. I used to talk about passions, you know, on my show. Well, I asked Milo, I said, Milo, what made you keep going? Well, first of all, I did. He wanted to give up and he wanted to die. He really did. And I said, God's not done with you yet. So I handed him two, two number two pencils and an eraser and a pad of paper. <laughs> And I said, he's not done with you yet. Yes, this is Linda again. But this, if you can see it, now it's very, very vague, but this is a number two pencil. That's why you've got to go over there to the library. Mm -hmm, You're probably not going to pick, up, but pick it up. But you've got to go over there and see what this man finally did. He said, okay, okay. Now, they're beautiful. These are the ones that I did not put 
into the library, primarily because I needed to bring something here. Mm -hmm. And then he started getting his humor back. Another doggone da day for me to try to explain. Here's a cowboy, and here's a sunset. Can you see that, John? Yes. So he was getting his humor back. And then we've got the horse. He loved horses, but then you see it's unfinished. Mm -hmm. So he had his good days and his bad days. There's called an urge. And when you have the urge, he wanted to sit down and he wanted to do something. He had to draw. People out there that are watching this right now that are artists, or if they're not artists, if they're crafts, craftsmen, don't give up. And this is what I'm trying to show you. There are good days and bad days that he had. I can see the differences. The ones behind, you can see right now, these are from the Hubble Telescope, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh -huh. And if you look on the Hubble Telescope website, mm -hmm. he Hubble Heritage Project, click on Art, and you'll find that Milo W. Reckow is the featured artist. And what they've done, John, is they've actually made four slideshows in his honor. So Milo Reckow is now world-renowned. Oh, that's so sweet of them to do that, to honor him like that. Well, they're just honored that we were, gave him permission because they loved it. Not too long ago, mm -hmm. the Hubble Telescope, uh, they had to do some repair for the last time uh, of the history of the Hubble Telescope. So they needed a filler, and they really featured Milo. So his work was all over the world. Oh, great. So that's what we have right now. So if you ever have the nice opportunity. Legacy, yeah. So if you, and he did 47 of these. Wow. So now let me ask you this. How would you feel if you were doing these all your life, and then you wake up in the morning, and you find yourself in a hospital? then you have to start walking, you have to start doing things. Now, sometimes he would lose it, and sometimes he would do well. He did real well with my, my, my girlfriend, but he blew it on me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cute? So, going on and on. This is a, a bulldog. I don't know if you can even see it. And number two pencil. And this is what I was trying to tell you, folks. So, number two pencil. Can you imagine? No, not even. No. Okay, now he's sitting in a wheelchair, all right? He's listening to everybody around him, and he's persistent. And he has that urge to go on. Oh, that's so sweet. Can you see that? With the baby? Mm hmm. So these will be, uh, there'll be a reception at the library on the 17th? Yeah, from what I understand, yeah, okay. keep on talking. These are just, just a few, and this is the tiger. You're going to also see Siegfried and Roy. We've had an opportunity to... They're up there on the, yeah. uh, the board, yeah. Uh -huh. And this was, of course, uh, I know, me again. There you go. I don't know if you could see that or not. But as he continued with his number two pencil, he learned that, okay, we can try to go a little bit darker. Oh. as his health would allow him to. So, what do you think so far? Oh, it's beautiful that to, to have that type of talent, you know, it just, it's, not everybody can do that. But folks, I mean, John, how, how do you have that, to get up and say, I can do it? I mean, the pat, you know, the passion's there, but the urge, it's something that, I, that only an artist knows, I guess. I mean, I don't know if I, I know I have horses, and I know I love horses, and I know I've got to get up to feed them, but to, do this to, to drive you, yes, that, that passion to uh, do art. Uh, yeah, it just, it's such a talent. And so we, uh, if you're watching, you know, hi, how you doing, Milo? It's been a while since I saw you. Oh, that's right, YouTube, you said. Yeah. And he does definitely uh, remember you folks, too, and then this is one more. But like I say, the ones that you're really, really going to enjoy will be the ones over there at the library once again next Friday, which is the 17th over at our beautiful library. It'll be between 1.30 and 3.30, right? The reception okay. and a book signing. And so folks, really give it some thought. Take, take, the, take the moment. And uh, also I wrote uh, a little bio about him. Did you get a chance to read that? No, not yet. Where is that at? It's over in the little bookcase. There's a bookcase. Okay, I'll have to look at the bookcase. I didn't look at the bookcase. <laughs> 1946, real quick, Northrop, he went ahead and airbrushed. Could you imagine airbrushing something? No. 1946, it was called a snark. 
and uh, it flew once. <laughs> and it didn't quite make it. So it's something, you know, that's where our money goes but everything else. Right. But, you know, we do wish Milo well, and uh, he certainly does have a lot to leave us all. But once again, John, I have to tell you, he really, I moved here in 2002, and he followed me. Oh, okay. And he wanted to. I was here before you. I was here to 1999. Oh, my goodness. And you came in from? Chicago. Oh, Chicago, yes. yeah. We're, we're two Polish people, and we both graduated from the same year, and we yes <laughs> same camaraderie. There yes. you go. We're down to the last minute. Thank you, Linda. Oh. Uh, remember the, uh, uh, the, the reception will be on the 17th mm -hmm. at 1.30? Yes. Right. And I want to say uh, thank you, a uh, good Christmas present I have from my mechanic, Edzo. Uh, he checked my car out on two different occasions this week, and he says there's nothing wrong with it. So thank you for being honest, Edzo. <laughs> you know, I love you. That's why I keep coming back. You have oh. the business from word of mouth. And it's great to see, to have people in this town that you can trust like that. Oh, for, for sure, yes. yeah. I think that's why Milo loves it so much. Don't forget also, Hubble Telescope Heritage Project. Click on to uh, the Hubble Art. Yeah, thank you for watching tonight, and Maria will be back with us next week. Thank you, Linda. Thank oh, you, thank folks. You.